I'm not sure how many people believe in paranormal activity, but anyhow, three men from Sydney have decided to chase the unknown in an effort to reveal the mysteries to skeptics like me. They're Australia's own ghostbusters, and they travel across the country and they spend the night in some of the more terrifying or scarier haunted, so-called haunted locations around Australia. At Goat's Crew, Ghost's Crew is an Australian documentary series, and it follows Rob Kerr and his friends as they endeavour to track the paranormal. And Rob Kerr joins me on the line. Morning, Rob. Morning, Steve. Have you found any? Yes, uh, we actually, we've had some pretty good results. Uh, we've been uh, concentrating on New South Wales so far. And uh, we actually, uh, at our last shoot, which was at Monte Cristo, which is in Juni, which is uh, Australia's most haunted house and also the most haunted private residence in the world. Right. Uh, we got some fantastic results there. Well, tell me, what did you see? What did you feel? What did you hear? Well, you know... Are you talking to a sceptic here, Rob? Yes, I know. Well, at these locations, you know, you'll hear things like you'll hear footsteps walking down the hall when no one's there. Uh, you know, you'll hear things being whispered in the room when no one said anything. Um, you know, you'll see lights on your camera that aren't there when you take the photograph. Uh, and, you know, we're, we're, we're out there and we're on a, you know, a mission to, to make sure, you know, that we can capture these sort of things to uh, give some evidence to people who are sceptics. So what am I, when I watch the doco, what am I going to see? Well, basically, you know, we're going to capture, in my opinion, some of the most compelling paranormal footage that's been seen on television. So, you know, we're going to like, try... Like what? Well, we're going to try and make it our, our mission to, uh, to show footage of apparitions or spirits. Um, it's going to be verified by professionals to make sure that it hasn't been tampered with in any way. And uh, we're doing these locations to, you know, prove that there is uh, an existence beyond uh, the one that we know. So how, how are you going to be different to those ghost tracking shows that we know already? Well, the, the ghost hunting shows and the ghost tracking shows that a lot of us have seen are American shows or UK shows. This is Australian, so we're concentrating on all Australian locations. Uh, we use a lot of scientific equipment for, uh, you know, what we do as well. And, uh, you know, it, we, we do that to, to make it uh, so we can capture, the, you know, the best footage that we can. What sort, of, uh, what sort of scientific equipment? Okay, well, we use what's called an EMF detector, uh, which is an electromagnetic magnetic, uh, frequency detector. Uh, that picks up on electromagnetic fields that, uh, you know, if you're in a house, and there's no electricity in the place. This thing, if, if it spikes, that means there's a, there's, a, there's a field of electromagnetic energy there. Uh, and we, we use those. We use infrared uh, cameras. We use uh, full-spectrum cameras, uh, you know, plus the, uh, you know, the, the normal cameras as well. Um, and also a few other little bits and pieces as well. But, uh, you know, we, we use the most up-to-date stuff in ghost hunting. How, how will I be able to tell, as, as a viewer watching your finished product. I mean, we live in a very technological, computer-oriented age. How will I be able to tell that what I see and what I hear isn't the result of some pretty smart equipment and some pretty clever editing? Right. Um, you will be able to tell because at the end of the day, when we've got our footage, um, everything that we have, you know, we're going to give to professionals to scrutinise and review. Um, so, you know, we have a whole heap of, not a whole heap of people, but a few people there at the same time that we're there, and we make sure that we document, you know, which locations we're in, which room we're in, you know, where everyone is at the time that the photograph or the video is taken. Um, so at the end of the day, all this footage is going to be put together, and we're going to put it out there for scrutiny, and, you know, the, the best professionals in their fields can analyse it and make sure that it hasn't been tweaked with. Now, are you a converted believer? Uh, I'm not a converted believer. I, I have believed for a long time that there's a, a paranormal existence out there, you know, and, beyond and, what we know. And is that belief the result of a personal experience? It is. Yeah, it is. Tell me. Uh, back in around 2004, uh, you know, I, I was a bit of a sceptic like everyone else, and uh, I took a tour at uh, a place called the Quarantine Station at North Head Manly. I know it. Yes. Uh, you know, do they have ghosts? They do. Yeah, definitely. Uh, i got people around me nodding their heads. Yes, <laughs> 100%. Um, you know, that, what sort of ghosts? I mean, do they say anything or do they just appear? Do they make noise? What? Well, they do. They, you know, you can have what's called a residual haunting and you can have an active haunting. And uh, the difference between the two is residual haunting is just like a, a, you know, 
a video camera or a video that just plays over and over again. It's something that's uh, the energy has been instilled into the place, and uh, it, it's not intelligent. But uh, it just if someone died at this you know particular time in the morning, that that incident will reoccur and reoccur. You know, are there are there voices? There is. There's voices. Uh, you know, you'll go to the quarantine station. You'll hear footsteps walking around the veranda. There's no one there. Uh, you'll smell things that are being cooked when no one's cooking anything there. But do the voices say anything? I mean, do the voices say, get me out of here, or... You, they... uh, actually, I wonder whether... I'd, I'd be interested in the time we've got left while you and I chat, uh, hearing from other people who believe in ghosts or, or know where there are ghosts. Yeah. So, sorry to interrupt. Definitely, yeah. Um, there is, you know, there's a lot of people that, uh, that believe in the paranormal, that believe in ghosts. Uh, you know, there's a big following for it in Australia and also overseas. And where did you, you say the most haunted place in Australia is? The most haunted place, the most haunted documented place in Australia is Monte Cristo Homestead. Yeah. In Juni. Uh, and what's the background to that? Well, that was uh, built around about 120 years ago by a, uh, a couple, uh, Mr and Mrs Crawley. And uh, they were quite wealthy back in those days. And Is they... that the place that was almost burnt down a few years ago? Uh, I'm not sure if it was almost burnt down. I know that uh, the, the owners there at the moment have been there for a long time, since about 1963 or something. Yeah, I, I think it was almost burnt down uh, in, the, in bushfires, but it was, uh, they saved it. Right. Anyhow... You must get you must get a bit uh, a bit toey, a bit nervous. It does, yeah. It gets a little bit nervous, uh, a bit anxious sometimes, because you know we're going. I tell you what, I'd be running a million miles if I heard voices. <laughs> we're going into these places at night as well, so a lot of the footage that we do capture is totally in the dark. So the only thing that we see is you know the the, the viewfinder through our camera. Um, but uh, it's not just about the paranormal; it's about documenting the history of these places as well. What about old jails? Uh, old jails we've done a couple of as well. We've done uh, Maitland Jail and we've done Old Dubbo Jail. Yeah. And, are there uh, ghosts there? There is. That both of those locations are haunted, but not to the same uh, degree as you know somewhere like Monte Cristo. All right. So when do we when do we get to see the product? Okay. Well, uh, we, we we will be shooting for about another three or four months and uh, wrapping it up and then going into post-production. So we're probably looking at some stage next year, maybe towards the start of next year. All right. Now, listen, don't go. Hang on. Warren, good morning to you. And how are you, Steve? I'm OK. You've had an experience with a ghost? I have, mate. I was uh, uh, sitting at me, uh, uh, on my lounge one day Yeah. and uh, watching the TV. I've been working six days a week for years. Yeah. Twelve days, uh, twelve hours a day. And um, footsteps were coming across our shag pile carpet from the TV towards me. Uh-oh. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. I went for my life out to the kitchen. <laughs> I'm with you. I'd have been out the back door before you knew it. No, I went to the kitchen and told the wife. And what did she say? Take a tablet and lie down, or what have you been drinking? No, I thought I was ready for the funny farm. <laughs> All right. But at any rate. So you, uh, that, you've had an ex you've had an experience. Yes, and uh, I've seen uh, apparitions. Okay. Uh, well, please, my wife is trying to butt in. <laughs> you tell her to butt out while I take another call. Ron, what's your experience? Steve, how are you? I'm okay. Mate, I've had a couple of experiences, actually. Um, but I just jumped in the ute and I heard that fellow talking about Monte Cristo in June E. Yeah. Actually, I was there on a tour with family one particular day, beautiful day, and um, walked in this outbuilding and I had the weirdest feeling... The coal shivers up the back of the neck. It was really strange. I had to get out of that little outbuilding. I left the family there, and they were sort of a little bit amused by it. So anyway, I left that building, and I went into this big shed which houses all these old timber wagons this fellow's collected over time. It's like an old big barn. Mm. And um, felt the same feeling, this tingling in the back of the neck. I, I felt really unwell, um, felt clammy, and I turned around. And I started just taking some photos of these old timber buggies and wagons this fellow had. And what did you get? I got, I got actually, and I've shown it to people, and they look at me, and they can see the same thing I did. There's a figure of a little boy in an old uniform. Can you email it to us? Absolutely. Good on you. And uh, I, you, you do that, and I just want to go back in the moments I've got left to Rob. Hey, Rob, that must sound familiar. It does, Steve, yeah. The, these things are very common. Uh, you know, people will be snapping away with their, their uh, camera, and uh, they'll pick up. 
stuff on camera that you can't see with your eyes. Uh, well, I, I, I can't wait for this email from Ron. I want to see what he's got on on, on film. <laughs> I'm sure it will be, uh, you know, very good. Um, a lot of the stuff that people get at Monte Cristo is, is exceptional. And, uh, you know, that is why it is classed as the most haunted private residence in the, in the world. Good on you. Thank you for talking to me. Not a problem, Steve. I look forward to the finished product. There Thanks. he is, Robert Kerr. Uh, he's making a documentary with his crew about ghosts and haunted houses and other establishments. Uh, there's a whole de website, incidentally, dedicated to Monte Cristo, if you're interested. It's uh, www.montecristo.com.au. And I cannot wait to get that photo from Ron.